Hi and welcome. We are back in Berlin. Like we didn't move, but we're still in Berlin at the awards conference. And uh, this is the final guest of the day, but we'll be back tomorrow, okay? This is just the first day. And this is Moritz. <laughs> 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 so um, we wanted also, like, uh, I wanted, actually, to be fair, I wanted to uh, highlight and feature our local, uh, talented uh, local UX designers based in Berlin. I did my research on uh, Behance and I found Moritz. And uh, actually, your logo, everything sound, sounded familiar. So I said, oh, I think I, I dealt with this guy in the, in the past. And uh, yeah, we might have some connections with uh, back in the days with uh, Flash, Flex, and everything. And I uh, contacted you and I said, yeah, OK, I can come uh, and showcase your work. And uh, I'm a bit involved in the beta of the project in Paris. Good to see you, Kevin, Vanessa. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, remember to be active in the chat because we st are still giving away XD socks, like real socks. That's impressive. For cold feet, <laughs> that's super impressive. And XD notebooks, uh, just be on behance.net slash live, sign in in the chat, say hi, say where you're from, and you will get a chance to receive the XD socks. So, Moritz, how do you feel today? Good, good. Yeah? It's, it's cold, but, but nice weather. Prefer oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold, but the weather is, uh, yeah, it's sunny. Uh, no, I, I'm really in Berlin. It's a beautiful city. Uh, and uh, so, and you are a UX designer in Berlin? Yes, yes. So, I mean, we, we call it product design, but, product but design. UX design is fine too, because that's definitely part of what we are doing okay. on a daily basis. Yeah, but, but mainly we, we are designing experiences. So I guess it's, <laughs> it's a good term for that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we have people from Istanbul, okay, Netherlands, all around the world. Okay, that's nice. good. Nigeria. It sounds like I say sucks. I know. That's my accent, sorry. It sucks <laughs> with an O. Oh, uh, be careful. Huh? Eduardo from Brazil. Wow, awesome. Now we have the America waking up. This is good. So uh, maybe we can uh, showcase your uh, portfolio. Uh, we can uh, show your screen. Yeah, sure. And uh, make sure to follow uh, our friends Moritz on Behance, okay? <laughs> uh, so what is the URL at the top? It's Moritz VV. Yeah. Moritz VV. And uh, you can follow him, give appreciations. So, yeah, you want to showcase some of your projects? Yeah, sure. I mean, um, I could start with, with some stuff uh, I did recently with a with friend of mine. Um, but basically, this was, was an app for, for sushi, sushi, which sounds a bit strange, but um, it was an super app for nice. Sushi. Oh, <laughs> I'm a big sushi fan, so. That's good. Maybe That's I, I should install this app. Yeah. So, what's the, the goal of the app? So, at, at, at that point, I was not really, really a sushi eater, but it, was, it looked so fancy, and I was always attracted by sushi somehow. <laughs> uh, Okay, sounds weird, but but anyways, um, and and the purpose of the app should be like for for beginners to be able to make their own sushi, um, oh. to have like really step by step instructions and okay. to see of uh, what what are the most classical sushi uh, uh, shapes and whatever or sushi types, so that they can start going ahead with with their sushi skills. Wow. Okay. Awesome. That's, that's basically what it's all about, and and for me, um, the challenge was was to visualize food. So anybody who's into food photography or food <laughs> rendering knows how, how hard it is to achieve good food photos. And uh, that was like the real big challenge we had at the beginning of this, oh, of this project. And uh, that was basically to, to push my 3D skills. Because <laughs> uh, the, the goal was not to use one single photo. It's, oh. it's all rendered. All 3D. Yeah, wow. it's all 3D. And, so um, what do you use for a 3D tool? Like, uh, which tool do you use? Yeah, for, for 3D, uh, it's basically almost everything done in, in Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D, oh, okay. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, a lot of stuff like the sculpting work you, you will see later there uh, was done in ZBrush. Um, and uh, some renderings were rendered out with V-Ray because it's, in my opinion, a bit superior than, than the uh, Cinema 4D default renderer. But um, that's everyone's taste. It depends a bit on, on what you want to achieve, right? Anouk says, uh, 3D, seriously? Yeah, yeah. This is 3D. Yeah, that, that's all 3D. So I have the proof. So later on, you, you can take wow. a look at the case study. So this is this is basically really all 3D drawings. Um, wow. Try to vary even the rice a bit so that it does not look too <laughs> generic. <laughs> So um, that's like any sushi eater will know it. These are like the maki sushis. Uh, we show a recipe for these ones. Mm -hmm. um, then, then we have the Nigeri sushi. Um, 
which is like even a bit more challenging when it comes to 3D shapes, especially wow. like this octopus, uh, which was like only the octopus arm was like work for three days, I guess. Three days, wow, like yeah. pretty much no sleep, but going <laughs> just uh, straight through it. Um, so, so that made a lot of work. Uh, then also like the Gunkan Maki just looks nice, nice. like some caviarish nice. look. Uh, so, so that's that's really nice to visualize, and we oh, want to super impressive. Yeah, we want to have this this jelly, tasty look in it. Um, that was that was like our main goal, and even um, stuff like the utensils you have to use because when you start with sushi, you're pretty pretty fast. We'll see that you that you need proper utensils to okay. uh, slice the fish or whatever. It's it's with a cheap knife not really possible to slice fresh fish like easily, huh. and uh, that's why we also have like a short tutorial of how to sharpen your knife. We we, we had a co cooperation there. Oh, you already explained everything. That's yeah, good. yeah. So we try to. <laughs> make a brief look for for every section there also like the fish um we also gave a brief introduction into the tuna anatomy but yeah. that, that you know if if you want to sound fancy at the next dinner then then you can <laughs> say okay i know what is the tastiest part of a tuna <laughs> we show that in the app um, oh, nice. um yeah and and also as already mentioned so you have like a brief uh, instruction for uh, how to cook the rice for example which is like pretty long ceremony yeah. in, in sushi and um, this gives you a step-by-step -step instruction of how to do it even with a small timer and they're asking uh, which mm -hmm. rendering uh, engine did you use it's a uh it was it was some stuff was rendered out with a cinema for the default renderer so okay. um, advanced renderer i guess it's, it's the name um, yep. and a lot of stuff with v-ray oh v-ray yeah yeah so there was no Octane back then, or, or it was there, but it was pretty experimental. It's already yeah, it was like a, a few years <laughs> ago, yeah, and, and we only had Macs, so no, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no Octane support there, uh, chip-wise. So that made it hard to, to try out these fancy render engines. Um, so it was basically V-Ray, yeah. And uh, yes, we will copy-paste the link uh, to uh, this portfolio, Moritz VV yeah. on and Behance. <laughs> and uh oh yeah it's probably in the info tab yeah thank you ibrahim cool and that's basically the proof what i already mentioned so that it's all 3d <laughs> <Making> <laughs> <So> <laughs> and this shows shows basically the hard part so so we modeled like nine different rice corns <laughs> and and then we varied them uh, ah you mix the colors okay to make sure you have different shapes I yeah, see yeah what to you have did. different uh, shapes okay. and then we place it onto this that was basically this done in, in zbrush and and then we put it onto this this kind wow. of clump and then then we try to achieve the right lighting then it was back into cinema 4d and and the lighting is like pretty hard when you want to render rice oh so yeah. um rice is not like any hard surface it's not like metal or whatever uh the problem with rice is basically that that light needs and to shine no, through uh, it there was no rice texture in cinema 4d I mean, uh, the, there, there, there are some are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are some some like uh, tutorials or whatever for for this kind of uh, shaders you okay. have to use um it's basically all about getting the right uh, settings for your subsurface scattering shader uh, that's how yeah. it called like everything which is which is fatty and so on so you, you can see it when you when you hold your hand against uh, a lamp or light yeah and then you see that it shines reddish through it so that's basically this effect is kind of like very broken down but this is kind of called subsurface uh, uh, shattering so um, that's what was hard here, so that it does not look like Tic Tacs or, or whatever here. Mm -hmm. So um, it took some hours to achieve the right result, and, and then we modeled the the octopus arm. Um, so started wow. with a base model, and then put all the. Oh, that's the one uh, yeah. which took to three days of work. Yes, yes, that was pretty hard. Um, and later on, like back to switched over to Photoshop, yeah, um, to and then pen the texture exactly, and oh it's all, all hand, hand painted, so it's not oh just oh photo mapping God. and then oh going yeah, yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Because it has to look like really jelly, nice, nicely, and that was our goal. Was awesome. Yeah, and then of course uh, we did not forget the app behind it. So yeah, there is an app. <laughs> there is an app. <laughs> it's for free, so you can you can download it in the app store. Um, and uh, sadly, not optimized for iPhone X or whatever yet. It was there when when it was iPhone six, but had had no time to <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> to exactly. really iterate on that. Um, but maybe soonish. 
Yeah, and, and that's also, we, we did a menu in the app, so, so like a mm. main menu where we have different sections, and for each section we had like a nice visual, and, and this is a short making of for, for the visual for the fish section, so where we describe the tuna anatomy, and where we uh, describe all the ingredients and stuff, so we started with a base model, then it went into smaller details, then, then uh, like texturing work, and at the end like a lot of post-processing, even the water is, is modeled and rendered in 3D, wow. and, and then it started to, to have the right feel for the composition and, and we had a nicely designed like menu item there. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah. Very nice way also to, to share your project, I mean, on Behance, it's super impressive. I mean, you were featured. Yeah, it was featured, yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Got a lot of, lot of likes and, and really appreciated all the... Oh, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, all the good words about it. And uh, Klaus Martin is asking, so is it cheaper to use 3D instead of trying to get the perfect pictures? Huh. I guess if you're you're an experienced photographer, photogra taking photos, it's cheaper. So, yeah. but um, if depends a bit on on and what you want to shoot. And you yeah. like the challenge, I guess. Yeah, yeah. and and, yeah. and also the nice thing is if you if you have a set of sushi as we had, like if you have fifty mm. different sushis, um, you will yeah. have exactly the same lighting all the time. You don't have to worry oh, about positioning it right and different daylight situation or whatever, right? Or or different lighting situation. Somebody slightly moved the light and then you already have have a problem, right? So you have basically full control. You also can render out every pass so so that you can adjust the shadows or or like the bouncing lights and all this kind of stuff is super adjustable and that makes it really nice to to work in 3D. Cocktail. Cocktail ah. was basically like super now old project. Now we're talking about <laughs> That was now what, we're what we did basically before the Sushi app. Um, that's uh, something where I wanted to learn like coding. The, um, that's basically the first web website I've designed and, uh, <laughs> and developed. So we are talking like we are in 2000, huh? like, a, ah, right. like back in the days was about cocktails. Oh, really? It was the beginning <laughs> of PHP and uh, MySQL. Yeah. And uh, and we say, and uh, we are very frustrated because you know when you want to uh, uh, like you buy a book of recipes of cocktails, there is always something missing, yeah. you know, like uh, yeah. that you don't have. So we say, okay, let's try to do the opposite. Like you you tell the app what you have in your bar, and we generate the book with all the recipes that you can make. Yeah. You know? nice. uh, yeah. Took me some nights also. <laughs> but it was That's it was cool. quite popular. It was cocktails.com actually. Yeah. But, uh, All right. It was a nice uh, school project. You still project. have it? You still own no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> it sold it. It was in okay. French. Uh, but, uh. <laughs> Great. So yeah, but but there was basically a friend of mine that did a, like Constantine Dads is his name. Uh, the, there's also oh, a link to, awesome. to his portfolio. He did like a, a nice poster where he came up with the idea of showing cocktails a bit differently. Like he mm. um, split it into the oh, uh, like nice. amount of milliliters yeah. or, or whatever. So so that you immediately have an idea of what ingredient has if what it's part of it. strong or not uh, yeah. in terms of alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. very smart. Yeah, and and there we kind of kind of iterated a bit on that, and and did a new like iPhone app about it, like uh, th this one. So, and the intention for me was basically I also coded it. So uh, I wanted to really in a learn native. It was Objective C, wow. so so I wanted to learn it, um, and it was the early days. So I watched every Stanford lesson uh, about <laughs> about iPhone coding and and try to dive into it. Um, earlier, I've watched some German tutorials and stuff. And <laughs> I didn't get anything, but then I started to watch the Sanford lesson and, and basically, well, it's that easy kind of, right? Why, oh. why didn't you describe it that easily here in Germany? <laughs> but it uh, seems to be a bit different here, but, but uh, that was like really nice to, to learn also coding a bit more. And it was still with all the memory management stuff involved. So all these uh, release retain stuff with all the... So, so basically, like the iPhones back then had not that much power, and um, yeah, and also space. Like they're talking about the size of the of the images. Yeah, and this yeah. is also like you remember, like the especially the first iPhone apps. It had to be less than ten megabytes. Yes. Remember, otherwise it was only authorized for user like on Wi-Fi to download yeah. it, but yeah. then it would kill your business. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Yeah, remember that. You remember that. It yeah, was tough. Yeah. Like it was tough. Like you yeah. had to optimize everything. Yeah. I mean, we we just tried to for the this uh, Coke uh, ingredient icon. Um, we wanted to have it sparkling. Oh, that's so nice. So we did an image rendered out an image sequence for the sparkling Coke uh, <laughs> ingredient, and then we tried to put it into the app, and it was like it a nightmare to to optimize it because it always <laughs> crashed when you try to open this view. But then it's I don't know four or four at night or something. I, I <laughs> like managed to finally have all the memory Make leaks. 
uh, fixed oh and, and then it worked. So that was like really, really nice experience. Oh, Yizu uh, says that now the limit is 150 megabytes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, yeah, I wish much better, better back then. <laughs> but now you have the Retina display, so yeah. <laughs> all the pictures are there. Yeah. Okay, that's Different nice. struggles, yeah. So that's basically basically stuff I was doing like for, for side projects, then also some infographics. You can just quickly, quickly go through this. Um, oh, yeah, there you was really a, like 3D, yeah? Yeah, yeah, there was a university project. Um, oh, that's uh, great. It was back then when I, when I really just started to learn 3D, and, and then we took an old infographic with, which was made in the GDR, so okay. in the eastern part of Germany back then, and uh, we wanted to give it like a new look. So we tried to keep some vintage aspects in yeah. it. So we painted like some textures a, as it was in the in the That's cool. from GDR um, and tried to have this look. Um, it was a nice nice project. So so like side projects are usually the ones where where I just want to learn stuff where it's like really interesting to to push your skills to the limit. And um, and we welcome back Rufus. Yeah, at the end of the <laughs> day. Yeah. No. no, I was I was like looking at the chat and I said, "Wow, amazing, incredible!" <laughs> and, and yeah, we and don't I have said, feedback here. What's so happening? Yeah, just come and watch. <laughs> <it again. laughs> so, Maurice, yeah. yes, you were uh, showing like a previous project has been working on mm -hmm. with a lot of 3D, and uh, now maybe you you can explain uh, the project you're working on today. Huh? Yeah, sure. Um, then after after a bit of freelancing, um, I switched um, to different or not different, but kind of uh, kind of different uh, business. So so I started um, at at BCG Digital Ventures. Um, so there I was like working in the design department, mm -hmm. and um, who doesn't know Digital Ventures? It's basically like the concept or the idea behind this is that that they partner up with mm -hmm. big companies and then they want to build businesses with them together because they have the money but not the digital knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like kind of the perfect combination if you found it or if you have like like the right people and the right talent uh, in your company so that you can partner up and build really cool cool businesses out of that. And um, one project, one venture out of this was basically the company I'm currently working for. So, oh, cool. so like Coop, it was one uh, joint venture uh, between Bosch and and um, oh. BCG Digital Ventures, and uh, it's now it's it's owned 100% by Bosch. So Coop, so um, Digital Ventures mm -hmm. pulled out, and and now it's like Bosch's turn to do the best out of it, <laughs> and we're giving our best to <laughs> to make make all our users happy on a daily basis. Um, that's basically what what I come from there, um, and I was just too too sad to let it go. So I switched over completely from BCG to Coop, mm -hmm. or basically Bosch. But <laughs> we're we're our own entity here in in Berlin, I guess. So at least mentally, <laughs> so that's we're trying to to have like the leanest processes you can have in in a in a corporate. And um, yeah, that's basically what we're doing now. So so there um yeah. So maybe you can explain what uh, what is the concept of Coop. Yeah, so you'll see that is something that speaks to me, uh, Rufus. Yeah. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm a user. I'm a user. <laughs> I think I think you talked to me about it yeah, when in Paris. In Paris, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So as already said, um, I already mentioned Bosch and and BCG, um, okay. but there is a third party involved. Um, so they are like our hardware partner. Gogoro. Um, okay. That's Gogoro. They are delivering delivering the scooters. I'm not sure if I think if you see the scooters, you immediately recognize them from some somewhere. So okay. they are super popular in the in the internet for a few years now. And they, they did a tremendous job with rethinking the, the scooter, basically mm -hmm. the, oh, the whole okay. scooter concept, which is really, really amazing. So I, I can only... for the batteries? Uh, uh, nope. No? Oh. There is, I mean, that's, that's a nice anecdote. Yeah. Um, so, so like uh, Bosch basically is, I don't know, one of the biggest uh, car part delivery mm -hmm. uh, companies yeah. in the world, right? But they, they have... One Bosch part is involved in every vehicle in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Except the GoGo scooters. <laughs> there's, there's no <laughs> no Bosch part. That's a nice so that's anecdote. kind of funny. Yeah. And, um, and except for being a partner. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and now we partnered up, yeah. and, and now they uh, gather some experience with a sharing business. There we can help yeah. them. So so it's kind of like a nice partnership. Mm -hmm. And and it's really really nice to work with them together because they mm -hmm. they are just they have the right mindset and and I mean the CEO yeah, is, yeah. is a former HTC guy he worked at Microsoft oh, okay. and and so on before and so Nike he knows so he knows technology he knows the lifestyle uh, and and he really shaped the brand the right way so it's not just another Vespa clone it's mm -hmm. like really yeah. another great advice exactly like like really awesome. a different new scooter and and that's uh, color me curious. 
Do you have a picture there in the, later in the yep. presentation? Yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now. So first, I mean, uh, what, what we did there, so um, as I already said, we, we built this company from scratch, basically, like Coop. There's, there was How many people? Uh, um, currently, we are around 50 people, not that much, but um, we started with a team of, I think, 10, more or less. <laughs> okay. um, so back then, and worked for quite a long time with these 10 people. So the nice thing about BCG is that you have business mm -hmm. people there, that mm -hmm. you have uh, coders there, and that you have designers there, mm -hmm. and that makes a good mix to come up with like an MVP, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then further on, you, you iterate it. Um, and, and that's like the stuff, for example, we also like, like created this brand called Coupe or Coup as a French person would say, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, we we kind of like the name, but we try to position ourselves somewhere and, and we had some thoughts and, and a lot of like bra branding discussions of how to how to go on and stuff. And, and then we did this kind of corporate identity where we where we came up with this logo, which which is just like an abstract helmet. Um, not everybody oh, yeah, will yeah. recognize it at first, but, mm, but that's usually I the case. <laughs> oh, oh, really? I can see yes. it now. <laughs> but maybe because of the lines, that the, the construction lines that ah, are still maybe. there, you know. Yeah. 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 But so there was was the initial idea of this iconic uh, C, um, and, and then we created or wanted to have like a bold, oh. nice looking mm. logo out of it. Um, nice. We we made our thoughts about like mood the, of how the yeah, how Ryan Gosling. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So <laughs> when, when we created the brand, we always had had the first scene of Drive in mind. I don't know <laughs> if you've seen the movie. Yeah. It was like yeah, it's awesome. it was just like silent. He wants to achieve stuff, and there was yeah, that's our brand. So we want people <laughs> to just achieve stuff. We we don't want any like ugly tool in between from A to B, right? Uh -huh. We we want them to have the easiest and nicest way going through the city and and achieving their goals. That was like oh, I see uh, someone because now they are interested in uh, jumping into the three D world, and someone yeah. say oh, Cinema Forty is I see. So actually, Mitch, with Creative Cloud, if you mm -hmm. install After Effects, yep. uh, Cinema 4D Light comes with After Effects, mm -hmm. and you have a, a lot of features already in Cinema 4D in the light version, ready to start uh, in 3D, creating shapes, rendering, uh, mm -hmm. and the full version gives you yeah more tools. But uh, if you really want to start to in get 3D, started, it's yeah. uh, it's great. It's yeah. it's yeah. very uh, yeah. you have yeah all the tools you need. So. As a CraveCon member, yeah, make sure to install After Effects and you, and you start it uh, from within After Effects. From After Effects, yeah. yeah, file and start Cinema 4D Light. Yeah, cool. That's awesome. It's it's a great tool. I mean, I love the guys at Maxon. They're doing tremendous Maxon, job. Maxon, yeah. And, and now if it's more integrated, that's good. Deserves the attention definitely. Yeah, then the usual stuff, color palettes and stuff. Okay. Um, uh, we that was basically and still is our goal. So as already mentioned, we we want these achievers to to have the best performing uh, shared mobility platform available mm -hmm. so so we don't think only about scooters um, we we think just about mobility platforms so so we are basically a software company so yeah. th that's at least what i would say mm -hmm. so <laughs> i mean there there's like uh, i think biggest parts of our headquarter work is just software work so yeah. so that's that's i think what what we're doing there so that's also uh, now my focus here for, for product design, of course, um, all, all the um, development work which, which went into, into uh, the Coop project. Um, I just broke it down to a few pictures here, um, but basically uh, our overall process was like that we started with a simple flow. We looked at different other scooter sharing uh, uh, companies, of course, like Scoot Networks, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's so a big thing. Amazing in San Francisco yeah. now. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we... we try to to get their problems and try mm. to make it better and, and <laughs> the usual stuff right you're doing when when you start with a new company but nevertheless we we then try to blend this out and try to make our own thing um so building it from scratch building coming up with a base structure um like a base flow that's roughly still how it is currently in the app there was like i think the second week or so we we did this kind of flow just ah, out okay. of gut mm -hmm. feeling yeah, we came out up with yeah exactly sticking it there then reordering stuff a bit um but also <laughs> what we did was yeah. just like continuous Whoa. continuous uh, work on the on the user stories and um uh, this is one thing we we just modified slightly it's it's called a uh, user story map mm -hmm. uh, jeff Patton has, has written a nice nice book about it but if you want to dive deeper into this topic but but we used it a lot for for blocking out the main parts of the journey and and then uh, mapping out all the minor activities there and what we did then is like we did swim lanes for for the release versions yeah. um also like for the alphas or, or whatever um and then we tested it so we did mm -hmm. a lot of user testing um, 
uh, we, we had like a nice room there with a mocked up scooter because at that point we did not have a scooter partner <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and we did user testing as good as what possible to do mm -hmm. it inside and not on the street and try to figure out what, what are the pain points for, for the people to, to um, like when, when it comes to sharing services. Um, and all these pain points we mapped here onto the journey so so okay. that for example when we figured out in, in a prototype that okay they have like real big issues when it comes to the booking um, then we wrote it down here so that we have it always uh, in the room hanging there that's a pain point we need to work on this mm. uh, don't skip it and and really make it better um, so so there was like our our whole motivation the whole time to make the the sleekest possible solution to have like a super lightweight journey at the end where it can basically we had the idea of I mean it's not possible because of regulations but we had the idea of this first free ride so that you don't have to sign up even you can just oh, immediately yeah. ride that's still our goal <laughs> that's, but it's but a good <laughs> idea but <laughs> <It's> <laughs> yeah. on paper on paper but uh, we're still talking about two wheels yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so you have driver licenses you need to verify them. Yeah. And, and this kind of stuff, it's, it's like a big pain point uh, for, for development work to have, have solutions there. But at the end, it's, it's like really all about quick, quick access. Okay. So that was like the, the base steps we really wanted to have all the time. So reserve a scooter, unlock a scooter and go. That's, that's always kind of our mantra of, of how the software should work. Um, so we did a lot of uh, wireframing iteration work, uh, spec'd a lot of stuff out. Um, and, and came up with different solutions and at the end we had like our favorite um, screens there hmm. and then we wanted to put this into a, like like a visual architecture um, so to start with a final visual or final I mean what is final these days but but to come up with with a visual design which which has all the thoughts involved and and which looks nicely which looks polished and which mm -hmm. just works um, so that was like really important for us to to based on our learnings to have this this uh, well thought through uh, mental model of the whole app um, so that's it's kind of a bit boring but but it's like really to have these different layers for for different uh, flows so for example onboarding should always be the top kind of layer yeah. uh, and then you dive deeper into the booking finally right um, or even the map layer at the very bottom um, and that was basically uh, the the first kind of design, how it looked like at the end. Um, so uh, we're already iterating heavily, so I guess soonish it will look look a bit differently. Um, but but there was kind of uh, a state where we all were happy and and where we kind of really pushed it out to the public and where we left the beta stage. Um, also, one still big with no scooters. No, at that point we, <laughs> yeah, but 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 right, yeah. So we had had, had no scooter one, yes. at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so we put like for for a long, very long time, we uh -huh. had like a placeholder there because yeah, we didn't yeah. know which which scooter. But then I think it was like four months before launch, mm -hmm. uh, like really last minute, we, wow. we got a scooter mm -hmm. partner and we finally convinced Gogoro to go with us. Okay, uh, because they were really hard. They told, okay, you're now like number 120 on our list. Who wants to open up a sharing service with ah. us? <laughs> So that made it really hard. And they were asking like about the methodology you use, like is it Scrum or like they're asking, uh, or is Scrum different from what you were showing? Yeah, just, just talked with our product manager about this today and he told, don't tell them we're agile or whatever. So <laughs> 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 but yeah, on paper, I would say we, we are working somehow agile. So we have something like sprints. Um, but it's it's like a heavily modified modified workflow we have because we have to deal with different stakeholders. We have to make Bosch happy. We have to be very compliant when it comes to all the law yeah, all topics. The laws, yeah, right, it's yeah. it's really a big part, and that's super important for Bosch all mm. the time to be as compliant as possible, um, to don't take any risk, um, and and that's like really a lot of stuff which just pops in, and you just have to deal with it, and that destroys parts of your mm. like agile flow, right? So. Cool. But of course, we use Jira. We have our tickets. We we uh, we prioritize properly, and and so that's basically the the flow or, or the work environment we have. And make sure to be active in the chat because we are still giving away some XD socks and notebooks for the cold weather in Berlin or anywhere around the, the world. So make sure to be on behance.net slash live. Sign in. Say something in the chat, and uh, we will pick someone in about uh, one minute and announce the name. <laughs> And Tim is asking notebooks. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's notebooks. Tim, Tim, Tim is not on the. Yeah, we'll make him come yeah, uh, before I mean, the end of the show. You yeah, have to say like hi to our friends. <laughs> yeah, we'll call you at the end, Tim. Okay, he's scared now. He's running away. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and then when we finally had a scooter, wow, look at <laughs> it was oh, that's all the about, wow. exactly, that's where the 3D skills kicked in again, so, yeah, exactly. so yeah. that's when <laughs> finally oh, yeah. I can do the fun 3D. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the other stuff is also fun, but, but that's basically, um, so good. we found it out in user interviews that like the scooter handling itself is a big topic, and of course you cannot do trainings all the time for the people, and you cannot like always give an in instructor with, yeah, with yeah, it, yeah. Like, so you have to somehow have this, this touch point to tell them how the scooter works we also did not want to have stickers on the scooter everywhere to mm -hmm. tell okay this is the button for this so, so they would just destroy everything um, that's why we came up with the idea of making it digital and, and uh, we have these short animations so that you really know of yeah. how you can start the scooter how can you open the the, the trunk so that yeah. you can take out the, the helmet. helmet yeah it comes with a helmet and, and hygiene caps um, so that you know all this. I really like this concept of yours of preparation time. Yeah. What yeah. is it? Three minutes? <laughs> yes, yeah, three minutes for free. So three minutes. You can yeah. Check the buttons. Uh, yeah, take the, the time thing, to check yeah. the scooter, yeah, yeah. the wheels. Mm -hmm. the yeah, yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. so that was the intention. So that it's with, without a hassle. That you can take your time. Mm -hmm. It's for free. And if you are joining us, so we are live in Berlin from Awards. Maybe we can switch to the GoPro uh, just for two seconds. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, because here we go. There is a photographer, but it's not the point. Like, so we are surrounded by all the awards conference attendees. So it's a conference about uh, web design, UX design, and uh, this is in Berlin. So that's why you can hear some uh, ambient <laughs> noise, I guess. Yes, <laughs> because they are having food. Yeah, that's hungry it. people. Yes, the <laughs> attendees are being fed. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, let's go back to a uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we build all this stuff, um, and and then they have their time to prepare. Um, then they know how the scooter works, and they are basically ready to go. And um, for the first 30 minutes here in Berlin, you pay three euros. In Paris, you pay four euros because I guess Paris people are richer. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so insurance is, is way more expensive yeah, in yeah, Paris. Yeah. Uh, so here in Berlin. Uh, here in Berlin, it's way cheaper. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah in, okay. in Paris, it's like really, uh, really expensive, and yeah. um, like our competitor in Paris even shuts down the service at night. Oh, to not in order not to pay insurance. Yeah, exactly, no. to not pay insurance for that. Um, but but we try to do it without, and so far it kind of works good. So mm. we don't have any any shutdown time except bad weather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's like I mean, like now. <laughs> exactly. So now I guess we're we're down in Paris still. So because of snow, heavy snow there, mm -hmm. uh, who could think about uh, that? And we have a winner for the XZ Sox, so the name will uh, oh, come very shortly. Oh, the name shortly. is coming. Oh, you want to read the name? Anouk Zana. Anouk Zana, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. You will receive a private message on Behance, exchange information, and you will receive the XZ Sox. Good. And the <laughs> notebook. <laughs> Okay, so what's next? Uh, yeah, so then you're on, on the scooter, right? Yeah. Um, and that's something which is uh, not part of the screens anymore, but, but this happens in real life, right? But what we also need to do, of course, is like we need to inform you, the users, about what we're doing. That's why we, of course, had to build a website and, and wanted to do it nicely and, and try to show as much as mm -hmm. possible about the business area and so on. So. Uh, our concept for those who are not that familiar with free floating sharing is basically our concept is that we have a main business area like a shape of, of the city and, and it has of course its boundaries but you can you can drive outside the boundaries but then you just cannot return the vehicle yeah, so, yeah, so you have to bring it back to the to the business the area zone. exactly you can park it that's fine but you cannot return the book so so mm -hmm. you will pay you yeah. will you will pay for it if it stays outside but but when you're inside Wherever mm -hmm. you want, which is especially nice in Berlin, because in Berlin you're kind of, or it's tolerated to to park the scooter anywhere. Oh, okay. As long as like like uh, you don't block something. Exactly, as long as you don't block something. Like it's rule of thumb that a wheelchair has has to be able oh, yeah. to pass by. So if that's possible, you can park basically anywhere, and that's really really nice part about it. Um, with some limits, of course. I, I don't, don't think they're that lenient in Paris, huh? No. 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 <laughs> Yeah, in Paris, for example, you have your like parking areas where, yeah. where you have to put yeah, your scooter. Yeah, almost at the everywhere. End. Yeah. yeah, I think earlier it hasn't been fined that hard. Now they they are really behind it. So, mm. so if you're parking scooter outside of the parking areas, it gets really p expensive in Paris again. So, but but still, it's it's really nice, especially in summer, to to go like to drive through the s uh, city with the scooters. So it's just. 
getting fresh air. Somebody said your website copyright is still 2017. Oh, these are old skin screenshots. Oh, no, they're checking the website. Oh, maybe on the website. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll change that immediately as, yeah. as soon as I'm back in the <laughs> office. Thanks. We have That's very, good. very attentive people yeah, here. In attention the, in the to chat. detail, yes. like Good attention eyes. Attention to detail. Very good eyes, yes. We should hire them. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. So that's basically yeah, basically that's amazing about project. It. Yeah, yeah um, and mm -hmm. of course there's there's still a lot of lot of work to do. So um, what I already mentioned, like it's it's branding not only for the digital brand, but also we have the assets, right? So this is like a picture of the scooter. Wow, oh, with the um, logo. Okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So we oh. came also up with a brand guideline of how to put the logo onto the scooter. It was really hard to transfer because we chose the color digital. Yeah, <laughs> a lot. Uh, <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm really not sure if I can say it. No, um, it's a lot. Watch That's is fine. like, really. <laughs> a lot is a number. Yeah, a lot is One, a two, three, a lot. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but we have really a lot of rides. Yeah. It looks great. The scooter looks great. Yeah. Yeah. For, for Berlin, we so far have almost 1,000 scooters in Berlin. We we'll ramp it up this year massively. Oh. And uh, you get an idea of how popular our yeah. service is when, yeah. when you're trying to get a scooter like around 5 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. in the city center because then a lot of people yeah. are driving home. Mm -hmm. so, so that's like really good uh, use of our scooters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. It's really a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, also this is like the scooter from the side. Um, and there you can, can see the beauty of, of the, the job like Gogoro did there, mm -hmm. um, like for the hardware part. And they thought it through in every detail. It's like even the batteries are are designed through. That's that's massive. It's it's super nice just to just to drive on them is even better. So <laughs> we we use the scooters kind of as an antidepressant in in, in in our office. So if if you feel like sad or whatever, we tell <laughs> them, okay, go go out on the streets and yeah. drive a scooter. And when you come back, the the life is way better. So <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so good. that's how it works. And and it's true. I mean, everybody comes back with a huge smile in his mm -hmm. face, and it's just just amazing because yeah. you basically have almost no sound there mm -hmm. especially in traffic lights it's just silent mm -hmm. you don't have any pollution it's it's super clean uh, way to to go through the city and it's really fast so we have There's like appreciation of how the logo is on the scooter yeah, yeah. that's uh, ah, nice. enjoy, yeah. 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 very nice touch very nice touch. yeah we, we wanted to avoid uh, uh, the, that the scooter looks like a billboard <laughs> yeah it's difficult yeah it's, right? it's really it's, difficult. A, it's a big challenge because that's the first thing that comes to mind no one do this to yeah. press here you know like yeah. and yeah exactly and that's usually how business stakeholders are thinking and, so and also like, <laughs> like most companies would then want also like you know like in this case if there's bosch there's this yeah. bosch stickers as well you know like yeah <laughs> but uh. <laughs> but no it's it's nice to have a client that lets you continue to be classy yeah yeah, no? <laughs> yeah agree. And invest in the experience yeah yeah yeah, awesome. yeah 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 mm -hmm. No, that was like huge, huge uh, achievement of also Bosch mm. to to allow that and to be mm. open for yeah, yeah. for this this brand to to have it like it is to mm. don't put stickers everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's it's really good. Yeah, and I mean anybody who has seen like shared vehicles or mm. bicycles or whatever, they are usually packed with with advertisements. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> it's usually a lot. Yeah. And Maurice, so we wanted to change you a bit and see if you could have a look at XD. Is okay. It something, yeah. <laughs> We you, could do that. You have yeah. a look? Okay, yeah. I let you. So, let's switch over. Uh, where we have it? Adobe Awesome. XC. I would use that service right away. Italy is not on the plans yet. Italy not yet. Coming, not no? yet. <laughs> <laughs> we we <laughs> launched Madrid in summer. We yeah. just oh, announced Madrid. it a few weeks mm -hmm. ago. So, I guess in June somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, then you'll be able to have three cities with mm -hmm. one account. So it's really easy. If you if you sign up for one city, you basically are almost allowed for any city. You just mm -hmm. have to accept the terms of service again for another city. Mm -hmm. But then you're, you're ready to go. So no more sign up. Do no you have more. like, um, just asking questions now, he's preparing. Um, like, do you have to be from that city to be able to ride the scooter? Or can a tourist come to Berlin and we, yeah. with a cool account? Yeah, basically you, you can. Coop? We say coop, actually. Coop? So oh, yeah, okay. yeah, but I say coup. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's coup. French would say coup, so yeah. I, I guess it's fine if you say coup. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. But but yeah, if you're but, you tourist, know, I live you, in Florence, and Florence is a scooter yeah. city. Yeah. You know, like you don't go nowhere with a car there. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll write you a message when we go to Florence that yeah, you can yeah, beat yeah, our yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I <laughs> put myself in the in the <laughs> newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, but that's really nice. I mean, the difficult, most difficult part about this is like driver license verification. So yeah, to yeah, accept yeah. also tourists, 
Um, but we have a lot of, I, I think it's uh, 40, 50 countries we support. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about the exact number, but it's a lot. So for, for tourists, it's certainly it's like, very, very complex. Yeah. Luckily, yeah. we don't do the verification part ourselves. It's yeah, like yeah. a service from the US who is very you, fine. You do the fun stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Almost. Yeah. Do you it's want time. maybe the screen to be a bit more? Is this normally how you look at it? I think it's fine too. Yeah, I, I'll just put it up here a little bit bigger. Oh, that's, yeah, that's better. That's cool. What do you think? Better? Yep. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. No worries. Cool. Good. So, one thing up front, maybe uh, at first I have to admit, we're still not using it in production yet, like at OBX okay. Day, but But I'm like a real big fan of it because I tried to throw in pictures like at one point because mm -hmm. one pain point for sketch for example for me is like the performance. I, I just when you have a lot of pictures and we have mm -hmm. all the instruction pictures and stuff it gets really slow. And I tried this with Adobe XD and, and it was still like running as whatever, super performant, right? So that was really nice about it. So oh performance is something that we have heavily invested in yeah. in, uh, in Adobe XD. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that, that like was Michael really has some awesome. crazy files with um, hundreds and hundreds of boards yeah. and zoom in, zoom out, zoom out. <laughs> yeah. So something I, I could just quickly do, I could like reconstruct one view of our app to to give you an idea of, of mm -hmm. how nice it works. Um, so so one thing I would love to to show you is like to to show you how to build this map view. Um, hopefully I'll I can make it in the rest amount of time, but I guess um, should be possible. So, um, if you've seen it in the in the presentation, how the screen looks like, it's it's pretty straightforward. So, uh, when when we have like scooters on the street, uh, we of course need a map. Mm -hmm. um, that's basically the the idea of what we have to have just a simple map view. Um, and there's one thing which is pretty nice uh, already from also from Google Map now these days, which is like styling maps. So. Uh, oh. we, we actually started with with using Mapbox um, mm -hmm. because yeah. Mapbox mm -hmm. enabled us to like tweak everything mm -hmm. basically. Oh, okay. But in my opinion, it was a bit too much. So mm -hmm. Mapbox, uh, anybody who has created maps with with Mapbox uh, knows how how hard it is to to think about all these small streets and to come up with a nice looking style. And and that's basically something which Google now somehow solved like in a nice way. Um, so uh, let me just put this here as, as the map. I think we are somewhere here. <laughs> right. so we need a, sc a scooter. Yeah. <laughs> we need a scooter now, yeah. So uh, let's switch to the layers here. Um, one thing I immediately do is like locking up the map. And Emmanuel is, uh, is being humorous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ça fout un peu un coup. <laughs> Ça fout un coup. Yeah. So they, are, they are listing all the yeah. expressions with the ah, coup in French. Okay. Ah, okay, yeah, we have that a lot, like ah. playing with words there, which is kind of nice. Coup d'état. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ah. exactly. yeah, and um, then one thing we did in our initial version um, is like that we, for the scooter pins, for example, we did not use the, the regular pins. We started to come up with something new. So. Um, because when you have a lot of scooters on one point, these pins overlapping oh, yes. is like, ah. like looks a bit a bit like weird. So that's why. So you use a spot and you say how many scooters there are. Yeah, no, not really. So we have this. Yeah, but similar. So so we have had the idea of um, like having this kind of halo there. Um, okay. So where we say, okay, this should be something like bringing back my colors here. Oops. Um, to have something like this and then give it like, let's kill the border for now. Le coup de foudre. That's very ah, nice. Yeah. Foudre. Let's give it an opacity of, let's say, I think we are like 20% or maybe like 40, 30, 40, whatever. Um, but what we did there is like we had this semi transparent uh, kind of. Uh, indicators of where our scooters are mm -hmm. oh, okay. and then to determine it a bit better we came up also that we have like a small circle there oh, nice. so that was our idea of, of coming up with the pins um, that we really wanted to have like the precision you have um, nice. plus if you have many scooters on one point and you zoom out that they are like overlapping a bit and the, then you have mm -hmm. this it becomes of, a bigger yeah. yeah kind of a heat map effect uh, ah, okay. and, and then you get the idea of where are scooters and where not um, now that we have so many scooters, we changed it a bit. So, so we uh, reduced the size of the halo a bit as, as when you zoom out so that it's even more dynamic. Um, 
can show you or, or you can see it in the app I mean it's it's you don't have to sign up necessarily you can just open it and, and try it out um, okay. as soon as our service is up again <laughs> and um, that was the idea so there we have this this uh, for every scooter we have like this this kind of pin um, and what you would do in XD mm -hmm. of course you would convert it to a symbol right so make a symbol oh, they are trying to understand where the name comes from why is it named a uh, coup <laughs> it was like a ridiculous story because we had naming word names. Uh, at some point, we had, I, I guess, Scooby, we had uh, Wings, we had whatever, right? So Scooby Doo. <laughs> Scooby Doo, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was our working title at some point. So, <laughs> so there was like like so much stuff going on there, like so many names, and everybody was like pro some names, contra some other names. And then at the end, like one from our team just came to us why don't we call it Coop? And we, why? How, how did you come why? up with yeah. that name, right? <laughs> Where did you know, it well, well, it's just a word. I dreamt about it, and, and I somehow find it nice, right? And and then we started all to think about it, and mm. and, and then we had this like Uber kind of name in mind mm. uh, because it's like Something short, short. Word. Yeah. it's really short. I mean, for German, you have the word Uber, right? So mm. it has some kind of a meaning, uh, uh, which is similar to coup in France, right? Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. so you also have a meaning, but we like the meaning now for us a bit better mm. because that's really a bit what what we were about. We mm. we wanted to have this this kind of coup for mobility services. Mm -hmm. We wanted to break out of these old standards mm -hmm. and do our, our own thing to be a bit edgy and to have our own style. So that's that's basically the story behind it. So it's not not really a meaning or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, we kind of got so used to this name that, that we kept just using it. And, <laughs> and that was like the nice part. Yeah. So continuing in XC, um, when you then uh, uh, have selected a scooter, so I think we would need like a different uh, symbol for this one. Um, let's ungroup the symbol and, and continue with this. For the selected pin, we still have like the classical pins to be really visible to, to have this uh, without opacity. Um, and there we just put this kind of thing. So let's say we're here. And uh, then we paint like this small thingy. So not really working according, like really precisely now. It's just like for showing, showing of how you could do stuff. Uh, of course, it's all super nicely specked out. <laughs> so here you can right click on the color mm -hmm. and say uh, apply as a border. Oh, that's awesome. And that's how it will feel. Oh, yeah. nice. Aha. <laughs> Learn something. That's cool. <laughs> And then let's uh, give it a bit more like, let's make, no, eight was way too big to, let's do four. Um, and that's basically, it's still missing this, or is it possible already, like that you can define the caps for, for the stroke, that you have like a round cap or... Yeah, not that, yet. Not okay, yet. waiting for that. <laughs> so yeah, there's a as need. long as it's not there, let's be at least this precise to... to Make it nice here, fill the border, give it a color. Here we go. There you go. So it works, Moritz. It works. <laughs> I mean, it's also yeah, same like for dotted mm -hmm. lines, right? I really to try to find dotted lines in Adobe <laughs> XD, but the nice thing is just like so when we later, <laughs> let's say this is our scooter detail cards, and and you want like real dotted lines. By the way, it's not even possible in Sketch to have properly dotted lines. Ah, yeah. Uh, they only have this sausage line, so you have like oh, this, I see. Uh, yeah. but you cannot put it like a, an exact circle. It's not possible, uh, and that makes it. But the nice thing in NXD you could do is just like yeah. it's it's a bit of a workaround, right? You can just like use oh, that's this, what I used to I mean. this repeat grid, and and then yeah, uh, for a dashed line. And if you zoom in a bit, yeah, just zoom in a bit, and you will catch a girl. Yeah, no, yeah, I can reduce the gaps there. Now so you have a dotted line. <laughs> So <laughs> now when you zoom out, you have like kind of <laughs> fake. Now I've learned line, something. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that works. Um, yeah, but then let's say you have this, this selected scooter and, and what we then have, have in our uh, customer app is like we, we have some details for the scooter, right? Stuff which is just important, which also we learned in, in user interviews. Um, that that people are really want to know how much batteries there are left in the scooter and and how long do I have to walk to the scooter mm -hmm. so that I know the exact location and stuff. So when I basically when my position would be like somewhere somewhere here, let's say, right? Then you of course want to know if it's five minutes or if it's twenty minutes. Uh, that's that's like a difference. 
and that of course stuff uh, we, which should be shown in the detail card but uh, this grabber is also nice to make the card not round that harsh it, yes. yeah to round the edges um, like all all nice stuff first introduced an illustrator oh really yeah yeah, yeah right mm -hmm. remember it yeah and uh, that's also nice to always have the measurements here if you keep pressing alt that you that yeah. you can properly check the margin. Uh, align yeah. it because usually I like to align stuff uh, to a grid which is like dividable by eight or at least mm -hmm. four mm -hmm. so so that you always have this nicely rounded rounded values for everything uh, so there we need to oops now I cut the alt there we need to increase it of course uh, mm, now it's time flies because we're uh, still okay, left okay, for two okay. minutes okay so two minutes to make sure can that do. they we can, can uh, we Follow you again, so yeah. Throw oh, yeah. our new scooter model. <laughs> <laughs> Which will be out in the streets like the summer for every city we're launching in. Oh, it's so cool. That's just like a rendering we did for, wow. for our it, new uh, scooter. Was it branded already? Is it a new brand? Yeah, that's, ah, on that's the side, yes. same. Nice. Like not, not in the front anymore. No, it's like because we have this, this gap ah, here. Um, the yeah. idea of mm -hmm. GoGro for the scooter basically is to... Um, to have this kind of more more off-roadish version, mm -hmm. so they have a lot of accessories you can plug there. They even mm -hmm. have like a grill which you can put on the sides so that you can mm -hmm. transport a surfboard and this kind of stuff. Uh, that's of course stuff which we don't offer so far, but <laughs> that's that's something which we uh, which we need to do like properly to our service. So this is like will be the next scooter. It has a bit more space on on the uh, seat compartment mm -hmm. so that that you can also transport a second person. Oh, that's nice. And, and this is like for and European. You can't with the ones. Now? You you can, but it's more uh, ah, adjusted it's to tricky. Asian uh, yeah. sizes. Ah, so okay. so that's for <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not that that easy. So for European, it's like really a bit hard. Cool. Uh -huh. And they shared uh, in the chat the link to your Behance page and yep. your Twitter, so Thanks. you can keep the conversation going on with Moritz and follow the Coop uh, project, how it's going on. Yeah, thanks again for sharing this with us. Thanks yeah. for being excited by this project. Yeah. And uh, for the people watching, we will be back tomorrow at 10 p.m., uh, 10 uh, a.m., so 10 in the morning, Central Time, okay, which is uh, because we're live from Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, we started there with Anton and Iran with uh, some exciting uh, announcements where's, where's about XD. Oh. Oh. Uh, Melanie, uh, yeah. Devaidi, she will be back creating a live prototype in XD. Uh, Lance Weeman, uh, Lance Wyman, yeah. yeah Lance Wyman will be here. Uh, no. We can, uh, yeah, maybe check Last here. Schedule. Yeah, just to be sure. So, uh, trying, oh, yeah, okay. Daniel Kluwer also, who is a, a local designer. And uh, Vitaly Friedman, who is the head of uh, Smashing Magazine, mm -hmm. will also be there with us. And we will end the day tomorrow with Koi, who works for Adobe, and he will be on stage. And uh, we will uh, live stream from the stage. So yeah. it will be our first. Thanks again, Moritz. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and cool. thanks for watching thanks. Okay. all day long. You were all awesome. And uh, see you tomorrow. It will be 10 in the morning in Germany, Central Time, on Behance.net. Yep. That's 1 a.m. Uh, on the West, on the, on on the the West, West Coast. Coast. Yes, so if you're not in, uh, sleeping at 1 a.m., join us. All <laughs> okay. right. See bye. you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.